this is Jeff Reddington with True Machine Automation and I haven't put out a video in a while. We moved all the way across the United States from Georgia to California. I'll probably do another video of that sometime. And uh, we're in our new home and new location. And we're just outside of Sacramento, California in a place called Esparto, California. Today I, uh, or recently I picked up a Wilton Vice, as you can see in the picture, and this Wilton Vice was on a shelf and amongst a bunch of other junk at a my steel supplier, and and I was in there and I'm like, hey, how much for this Vice? And they're like, well, you know, the boss wanted 200 for it, and I'm like, what? 200? No way! And then he's like, I, I said. I said, I'll give you 30, and they said, well, take 50, and I said, I'll give you 35, and they said, well, take 50, and I said, come on, and they said, nope, 50, <laughs> I said, okay, 50 bucks it is, so I bought it, and basically, I bought it, because I'm going to actually use the vice, now, my idea for restoring this is to make it operational, and I'm not trying to make this thing a showcase piece, and so, we'll talk about that as we go through. But the idea is I wanted to restore this vice to the point where it looked decent and it worked. And I need a working vice and I do mechanic work, I do machine design, I do automation projects, I do all kinds of stuff. And I work out of my home, most of the work I do is at factories, but I do projects at home as well. And you can see it's it's in a six inch vice that is a, a, a bigger vice, but this here is a four inch Wilton and as you know they're highly desirable and so this thing I'm going to show you some pictures of it before and then as I'm restoring it and then after when it's all done and this vice was in bad shape you can see on the very back of it here right there where the customer actually had welded on it and you're going to see some other things about this vice that are just horrible. And so here we go. There's your, when I got this, the thing, the, the handle would not even open the vice. It was rusted shut. And, and you can see the jaws are pretty much in bad shape. Like they're just, uh, I mean, they're still usable. It's just that, uh, Everything about this vice was rusted. It's just been, must have been out in the rain for a long time. And look at that. I mean, that keyway is, looks in very bad shape. And this is as I'm starting to work it out. And I mean, I had to crank on this sucker. I had to stick a wrench on the handle to even get this thing to turn to start coming out of there. And, then here's another picture of it once I got it out. And you can see inside it actually doesn't look too bad. It was just that outside that looked really bad. And so, yeah, this was in pretty bad shape. And you can see there the lead screw inside because it was all encased. That's one nice thing about these Wilton bolt vices is they're encased and there's inside, as long as this thing ain't underwater, uh, they stay pretty good shape and uh, so here's another picture of the upper side of it and uh, of the of the slide or the barrel of it and the handle and here's looks inside look inside of that now, can you believe that look at that keyway that was not going to move anytime soon and it definitely needed some help and uh, so that, uh, and you can see there, the vice jaw there. Can't even see the pin in the center. So, yeah, it is a pretty rough shape. And at this point, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, what have I got myself into here? Is this vice even worth fixing? And so there's another picture of it there. And this vice below here is not a Wilton vice. It's some kind of Wilmar vice. I think it's a copy of a Wilton Vice, but it's made in Taiwan or someplace. And one time I hit it and a whole big old chunk come out of the end of it. And so it's not a great Vice. It's not a Wilton, but it is a working Vice. I've used it for years and beat the heck out of it. And 
you know, it, it's a working vise, but uh, not like a Wilton. Okay, so there's another picture of the Wilton, and uh, here we go. Now look at the back of this thing. They welded this thing on. Now I could have ground this all out, you know, rebuilt it and all that. The reality of it is I just need a working vise. So this was a good weld. It's not going anywhere. And so later I grind this smooth and paint it. And, and I'm perfectly happy with how this vise ended up because it's going to work for me the rest of my life if I want to. Okay. Here's one. Here's the one that really got me. I'm like, what is going on here? Well, they evidently couldn't figure out how to get the pins back in this and welded it up. And, you know, some people are real hacks, okay? Not that I haven't hacked a few things together in my life. But uh, some people are real, real absolute hacks. And so, here you go. Look at that. They tried welding the nut in. This nut has threads in the very end of it for probably about an inch and a half, two inches. And this thread goes in and it's supposed to have a pin through, a couple of pins through it. Well, this thing literally, they tried to weld it in here, but guess what? These welds did not take into the casting. And there is a type of rod you can use that I've seen we welded steel to cast iron. It's called an ion rod, a stick welding, using with a stick welder. And that ion rod will weld casting to steel real well. This is casting casting, and they didn't use the right type of welding rod for this, and so it didn't take. And so I was able to actually knock this out and knock these welds right off of there, and it wasn't actually not welded. And it was loose in there. And so it was not going to work. And luckily I was able to get this thing out. And then the cap was missing. As you can see. Now there we go. I got it out. And uh, you can see the inside there. Where it has little keepers. Where when that barrel. That threaded nut goes in. It's real long. And it has little places where it's kept here and which helps it to keep in place and lines it up okay there you go the barrels out you can see it's hardly rusted and so it's in pretty good shape and even the threads on this vise are in good shape now this vise was used a lot somebody owned this vise and used it for years and years now on the very bottom of these there's another view after i've cleaned up where they attempted to weld it and uh on the bottom of these vices of the keyway is a date code and it's a warranty date code from I think it's five years after or four or five years after these were built so it says uh, one of 1978 so this is probably a 1974 vice but uh, whoever bought it used it uh, and I can show you why here in a few minutes there I got the jaw off of the main body and there's the jaw and the pin. And these pins came out real easy. And uh, there's uh, there's another one. I had to knock this pin out to clean it up. And here is uh, here's a view of where the the sliding jaw goes in and out with all the bolts out. And all three threads were good. I didn't have to restore these threads or do anything to them. They just needed cleaned up. And then here's the here's the handle and the screw and this silver piece here that, that keeps this in and that it works against it had worn this shaft where the slot in here was actually five sixteenths of an inch wide and this here is only like about three sixteenths thick and so this thing had so much slop in it. And then look at that. Look how it's worn. See that? So the slot itself not only wore, but this here keeper wore it way down to about half size. Okay, so I knew that wasn't going to work. I had to make a new one. And here's a sliding jaw where its receiver is. There you go. There's the pieces. 
all out on a table. And here's the key. What does that say? 1 of 78. Okay. So this is probably made in 1974 or 1973. And, uh, and you can see once I started cleaning this up, it looked way better. And uh, all that rust looking crud that was in there was looking really nice. And, uh, and see here this slot. This slot at one time was sized to where it would have fit the um, that keeper but this thing has been worn extensively so this here I actually ground this to uh, make it the uh, a, a set size of a little bit wider than 7 16 so that I would be able to use a five I mean five I'm sorry five sixteenths point three one two five inches and uh, so I actually cleaned it up to where it'd be a nominal size. And here you go. Look at that big gouge. Who puts big gouges in the back of their vices with a grinder? Again, it's the same guy that welded this. The guy was a hack, evidently. And, you know, I try not to hit the actual vice with my grinding, cutting wheels and such. You know, mount it where you don't do that. But it, so this vise had this huge gouge in it here. Now, I didn't want to weld this up and try to fix it. So what I did is whenever I uh, clean, cleaned all this up as best as I could, I made the opposite side match. And you'll see that later. There you go. I'm getting it cleaned up. Look at that gouge up there at the top left. Look at that. Who does that? I couldn't believe it. Anyway. Uh, especially to a wheel device, okay? So there's the, uh, there's the side getting cleaned up, mostly cleaned up now. Now I just used a wire brush to do this. Wire brushed it. Now I've used paint remover and all that, and you still have to wire brush them. So might as well just wire brush it in the first place. Okay, there you go. Look at that. That is just so horrible. I don't know. Nevertheless, there it is. Now here you go. Now I'm showing it where we're getting some paint on it. Now the the sliding jaw has some very huge gouges in it as well. If I would have grind those completely away, uh, I would have had to grind a whole lot off of this, and it wouldn't have looked right, and it wouldn't have felt right, and it wouldn't have been right. So I left those gouges in there, and uh, and the paint filled them up some. But uh, I did not want to grind this whole jaw away to get rid of those. And again, I wasn't, I'm not in the business of restoring this to, to make it look pretty just so I can look at it. I'm actually going to use this vice every time I'm in my shop when I need a vice. And so there we go. We got it from the side. I'm spraying a heck of a lot of paint on there. You can see it draining down here. I probably sprayed too much paint on here, but that's how it goes. When I'm done, it's going to have a lot of paint on it. <laughs> there we go. There's another view of it from the back side. And, and uh, getting painted. And that is not the vice. That's a setup I was doing at, at, at one of my customers for them. Okay. There we go. Now here I'm taking a black, I have taken a black marker. And I put a black, you know, black Sharpie permanent marker and marked all the letters so that they stand out, make it look better. There you go. There's another view of that as well. And uh, the thing, and, and I've got this where it just slides all the way together, slides out perfectly. And then here's another closer view of it. And you can see where the welds were, but I ground them all down to where they looked halfway decent. And, uh, and then next, here we go. I need that that cog. So what I did is I found a blank piece of metal at work, and I turned it down to 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. This was off of a laser piece of scrap. And here I've got it marked out where I want to cut it down to. And here I'm drilling some holes for mounting it. Here are the holes are drilled. And this one I got off and I had to slot it so that they all fit. So I test fitted this to make sure these holes worked. 
And here I'm actually taking a, a cutoff wheel on a grinder and I'm just chopping chunks off. Chop, chop, chop. And just keep chopping away and grinding away. And look at this wheel mar vice. I've had this thing for years. And, uh, and I've really beat it up. And, uh, but then the other side, there's a big hole in there where the casting was bad and they just filled it with Bondo. And that's what somebody in Taiwan or China would do. This Wilmar, I, I can't find them anymore. So, I mean, I can't find this company anywhere. But this is a copy of a Wilton, probably a Wilton Mechanics Vice. But it kind of looks like a bullet vice. But nevertheless, I'm making this cog. Here you go. And, um, and I'm just making this by hand. And when I'm done, it's going to look nice. And there we go. So in this picture, you can see I've got the cogs outside all done and cleaned up. The inside's a little rough, but nothing touches there, and it really don't matter. And and so that was just where my grinder got a little bit happy and gouged a little too much out of where I had it marked. And but the actual engagement is beyond that and so I'm not going to hurt anything. I got some brand new screws that I had in my drawer to put in there and again you can see those gouges on this side the person really tore this vice up okay now there you go I've got the handle in and I've got the now this handle again I'm using this I'm not I had I didn't restore this to sell it or to make people happy that it was the most perfect restoration. I restored this to use it. And I'm going to use this vice for years. And uh, and this handle's got a little bit of rust on it. I'll probably clean it up a little more. But uh, here you go. Here, I drilled straight down through here with a quarter inch drill all the way through the uh, this piece here, which normally goes on and off. And then all the way through the nut, which is inside, and I actually have it tightened. And then I am um, drilled this down through here in order to keep the uh, screw nut in place, and also keep it from twisting. And and then and then once I got this, once I got this drilled all the way through, I literally uh, swage the end of this drill drove it in there and then I cut the drill off on the bottom and left the drill in there as the pin. There's a long, long drill, long shank. And uh, so I just cut it off both ends and painted it up. So now my vice is not coming apart. Ever. Well, you can drive it out from the bottom. Okay. So there you go. This shows the pin in there. So the nuts in there. And on the what I did, the screw would normally come through almost to the cap within about a half inch of the end of this vise. What I did is I cut it off. I cut the screw off because I don't want this vise to open that far anyway. I never do open a vise that far. And uh, when they get out that far, they're loose and flopping around anyway. So there's one side of the vise. There's the opposite side of the vise. Here I am, this screw, I cut off approximately about three quarter to one inch of this screw. And again, I don't ever open it that far anyway. And here I go, I got the end of the screw all cleaned up nice on the metal sander. Now here I've got a cap. I took the I took a pipe cap that normally screw onto the outside of a piece of pipe and it's cast iron and I took it and machined it on the lathe where it's two inch outside diameter and then I thinned it down inside where it doesn't interfere with anything inside the vise and I made this at I don't have a lathe at home right now so I made this at work and there you go it kind of looks like a cast iron and it is cast iron and there I am. I've got it lined up here, getting ready to drive it in. There it is, driven in. I drove this in a hair too far, but wasn't going to take it back. I wasn't going to take the vice apart just to knock it out, you know, a sixteenth of an inch. There it is. I sprayed a lot of paint on there and got it all painted up, and uh, that makes for the 
makes for the end of the vise being done. And so, yeah, now it has a cap. And here we go. There's my vise ready to go to work. I'm going to mount this to my bench or to the top of one of my toolboxes. And when I need a vise about that size, I've got one. No, that is a Wilton vise. I mean, who who doesn't love these things? I love this vise, and uh, I'm very happy with it. When I put it together, I put it together with a, a white lube. It's like a per, it's like an everlasting white lube, and uh, I put some end underneath this handle, so it doesn't squeak. And this thing is as smooth as silk going in and out, so still works great, and it's a good testimony to how well these vices are built because this thing was used a lot. You see how thick I had to make this uh, keeper for moving this in and out. This vice was used a lot and abused <laughs> quite a bit and left out in the rain and brought it back in a little bit of, you know, a couple of nights. I, I did this like two or three nights in the evening when I come home from work and, you know, probably four or five hours later. I've got this beautiful working vise, and it's going to last me for years. And, and again, I didn't build this to be a showpiece. I just built it to be something useful in my shop. And uh, so, yeah, I'm very happy with it. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I uh, appreciate your time. And, you know, subscribe to my channel. Uh, comment. I'll answer any questions you might have. And, uh you know leave me uh leave me a like and hey i've got a new store as well if you go to my store you can buy merchandise with my uh true machine automation established 2003 and so thanks a lot guys and uh and i appreciate everybody that's subscribed to my channel